Uh, to tell us more about today's summit, as well as some other developments in regards to North Korea and U.S. relations, Dr. Kim chang Su from the Korea National Strategy Institute and Arirang's Park ji joins us in the studio today. Welcome. Thank you for having me again. Thank All right, so let's start with uh, today's summit, which is arguably one of the most highly anticipated and mostly watched uh, diplomatic meetings in a century. Now, uh, what were your first impressions of their first historic encounter? My first impression was everything went as well as planned, and uh, it ended on a very positive note, mm. uh, contrary to many other expectation otherwise. But I think it's very uh, great because all the many people just involved have made tremendous effort to make this historic meeting a success, a great success. As Mr. Trump said, it's a, a tremendous success and it will be done. Mm. Everything went so far, much better than we expect as a matter of fact. So we are just hoping, what, what will be the next step? Maybe right after the lunch, mm. uh, will they make a kind of joint estimate about uh, guidelining the CVIZ and CVID? Because the details will the devil is always in the detail, mm. and I think we have to just wait and see, and we'll see what what have we, what have made the, the exact language of the joint statement by the two leaders pretty soon. Right. We'll definitely mm. have to see some swift progress, though, considering that North Korean delegation Kim Jong Un is reportedly leaving earlier than way earlier than expected. Now, I think this, this is a part of his maximum, you know, oh, maximum okay. press okay. <laughs> <laughs> press coverage. That is. Yes. Now, uh, what were your uh, impressions? First impressions. Well, you know, as many have anticipated this historic moment, there were some doubts and there were some obstacles coming here. Trump once canceled this meeting before, and now we'll see that, that there were prior coordination meetings between those um, working level officials. And obviously, since those working level officials have agreed on something that we do not know yet. Right. So I think it went very smoothly. And it was great to see those two leaders like smile upon each other, mm. considering that the two leaders were you know, fighting over Twitter and on right. cyber, <laughs> all made us very sort of nervous those, for those living in Korea, obviously. Mm. So now let's look at their first comments. And when they met face to face, for the first time, Mr. Trump said that he's feeling very, really great and that the two are going to have great discussion and they're going to have a terrific relationship. Now, Mr. Kim, on the other hand, said that it was not easy to get here and that there were obstacles, but we overcame them to be here. So what can we make of those remarks? Uh, the difference between the two leaders' remarks is very striking because mm. Mr. Kim was actually talking about the, how difficult it was for him to mm. come to this place. This is a kind of his, his own way of dealing with Mr. Trump, as opposed to Mr. Trump, who is much more confident because he's been through all these kind of meetings elsewhere. Just uh, went to you know, Quebec uh, last right. week. Mm. So he's very knowledgeable of all kind of meetings he might have with foreign leaders. But Mr. Kim Jong-un is the first leader has never flown out of the, the North Korean, uh, the recursive uh, state of North Korea. Other because, than China, Yes, right? and yeah. this is the age differences, all the cultural differences. So this is a typical two leaders talking slightly different, but there's a, I saw a lot of commonality between, between two leaders. Mm. They really went to make a success of this meeting. They really mean the business that we are going to head for the CVID and CVID. Mm. Uh, no matter how uh, long it's going to take, we'll work on those details, guideline the you know, timelines and, and uh, the milestones along the way. Right. So I think this is a very important, a slight differences, but a lot of commonalities between the two leaders, I, mm. I, I noticed that. Mm. And also considering that they had prior consultations several times, and the first thing they said was that it will be tremendously successful, means that they have agreed on something like significant and something tangible. Mm. So I guess we can expect some, not like, quick fix for all, but right. some gradual approach to mm -hmm. solving the nuclear crisis here in Korea. Right. Now, the two talked alone for about 40 minutes with only a pair of interpreters by their sides. So what could have been discussed there? Just the two of them. I know we don't really have an idea <laughs> yet, and I know something's going to come out when the summit is officially over. But still, I mean, they sat alone for 40 minutes. And everything will be you know, made it public to the public a couple, uh, couple of an hour. But I think uh, the two leaders were trying to impress others with their firm belief, firm determination, 
I really mean business. I've come all the way from Washington, Pyongyang to make a big deal. Mm. Once and for all, I know this is a, the first step of a long process of the CVIZ and also the normalization of the relation between the two countries. But I think this is a kind of the first encounter of the two uh, leaders and getting to know each other and how, because as the Trump told over and over again, I, I have a kind of, kind of, I can have a feel mm. in a minute or two. Right. I think he really means that he has a really gifted uh, talents about knowing uh, the, the people uh, on, uh, at the, across the table mm. because he's been so many uh, meetings all over the world for right. his 70 some years. Right. And so I think he really means this. And I think uh, Mr. Trump finds something uh, very favorable about Mr. Kim because mm. he's a very different leader from his uh, father and his grandfather. Right. And he is, maybe he's so desperate mm. for the welfare of his rich people. And because Mr. Kim knows has uh, begun to know that his country has been so reclusive, mm -hmm. so closed, and now he's really opened up his society to the outside world, and he was going to uh, guarantee a well-being for the country because the North Koreans have suffered a lot for the last uh, five mm. decades or so, and they, Mr. Kim will be remembered as a really great leader for the benefit of all people. So that's something that he was really trying to convey to each other. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Trump on his side, uh, I really want to see the end of the Korean War because mm. we haven't fought for long. Right. Uh, so we time to stop this kind of hostility between the two countries and also regional countries as well, mm. with China and Russia as well. So I think this is a kind of the, the impression and the, the tenor of the, the meeting was very favorable, very positive. That's why they succeeded in another meeting, extended meeting, and also leading to the uh, uh, ex working, uh, working lunch. Right. So I think uh, the first impression they got was very positive uh, because they actually lowered kind mm. of their expectation toward each other rather than raising kind of hiding so, so much because this is a process of long learning on, on the side of the two leaders. Right. Uh, even though they have been not, you know, countering each other physically, mm. but they have learned a lot about the other's uh, conditions, situations. So I think they, uh, they're really trying to strike a big deal mm -hmm. and they will be remembered as the real hero of the new chapter in the new Korea, inter-Korea and also U.S. DPRK relations. Right. The two leaders are definitely different from their predecessors, sure. uh, Kim Jong-un, definitely from his grandfather and his father, because mm -hmm. he has been at a boarding school in Swiss, right? And also Trump is very different from yeah. his predecessors. So, and that's why he's saying that he was able to have this kind of summit, you know, make this possible. But you talked a little bit about the peace treaty ending the Korean mm -hmm. War. I mean, what are the chances that Kim and Trump could sign a peace treaty to officially end the Korean War. A signing of history is something that we can expect in the years to come. I don't think it will be realized anytime soon, but saying, uh, uh, you know, talking about the end of the Korean War is something that we can discuss. Mm. And we definitely, China and Russia and also South Korea, of course, will play a very important role in signing a new peace treaty as they can repeal and replace the existing armistice treaty, armistice uh, agreement rather. Mm. So it'll be a kind of step-by-step -step meeting. That's why even though Trump, Mr. Trump, uh, Mr. Moon Jae-in was hopeful that I might join them right. on a, a summit and talking about the, the, the declaring the end of the uh, end to the Korean War, mm. but I think it, is, it turned out to be uh, bad, better without, so? without the presence of Mr. Moon Jae-in because this is a two uh, leaders meeting between mm -hmm. DPRK and USA meetings rather than trilateral or in the, in another meeting on the south, south, south line, mm -hmm. sidelines rather. And this is something we can, we can pursue later on our next stage, okay. whether it be Pyongyang or Panmunjom, some other places. Uh, President Moon Jae-in can and should join mm -hmm. him, uh, these two leaders, in declaring a war end to the Korean War and finally signing a peace treaty with the United with the North Korea uh, between the United States and, and the North Korea. I think this is something we can be hopeful for mm. to achieve uh, on a on a way along the along along the road. This right. is yeah. This I'm sure, we'll probably see a trilateral talk between uh, Trump, Kim, and. Uh, South Korean President Moon Jae-in sometime after. And try to also I quote right on it, including the in Chinese right, leadership, right. of course, because right. China has been a very important uh, kind of actor in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. And China really vows to play, continue to play a very important role for the, 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 for the good mm -hmm. of the North Korean leaders. And it's not just the, 
uh, ICBM or North, North Korean nukes, they really uh, prompt China to come to the negotiating table or playing a very important constructive role, mm -hmm. I would say, uh, because they have the power and they have the knowledge and they have a long ties with Pyongyang. And they, uh, rather than opposed to some other countries, mm -hmm. uh, China will, along with the United States, right. can play a very important role. And recently we've yeah. seen an increase. And they should. I think right. They I should. mean, we've seen increased interactions between China and North Korea, especially That's recently right. as they prepared for the Kim Trump summit. Now, going back uh, to the summit, the two leaders talked alone for about 40 minutes with their advisors joining them for extended talks after that. Mm -hmm. Now, who were there from both sides and what could their presence mean? I noticed on the, at the extended meeting there were five on one road and on one side, and the other mm -hmm. side there was a five, excluding two interpreters. Uh, Dr. Lee on the U.S. side, the future translator for Mr. Uh, Trump. Right. There are three important uh, chief aides on both sides uh, who are in charge of national security, for example, and also chief of staff of White House. Mm -hmm. And I think this is, the, they really symbolize what kind of significance they attach to this particular meeting, very limited meeting between those five, four mm -hmm. member kind of meeting, uh, including the two interpreters. Uh, but this, this shows the sincerity and the agenda they have toward each other, uh, that is uh, CVID and CVIG, and also the normalization of relation between the two countries in the years to come, mm. or maybe sometime in this year, I don't know. But this shows the, 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 the presence of the chief uh, aides to, 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 to two leaders show how much importance they attach to this particular meeting and also the, the preceding meetings entailing other meetings, uh, subsequent meetings in, in mm. between the two leaders, whether it be in Pyongyang or Washington or Mar-a-Lago, I don't know, in right. Panmunjom. <laughs> who knows? Yeah, who knows? But you know what's interesting is, though, that you as the National Security Advisor, John Bolton, was there as part of the advisors with Trump, and we know that he's the one who talked about the possibility of applying the Libya model to denuclearize North Korea, which angered, obviously, North Korea. We, and we, we saw this leading to the cancellation of the summit uh, between the two sides, which was, again, revived after the summit between, second summit between President Moon Jae-in and Kim Jong-un. So what are your thoughts on that, on Bolton's presence there? Uh, it just turned out because North Korea is very angry and irritated by the Mr. Bolton's remarks on the, the Libya model. But we have a lot of misunderstanding and misreading of the, the Libya model, as a matter of fact. If it should be a North Korea monitor, North Korea specific model, it is a little bit a resemblance with the, the Libya model that was uh, applied several years back. But I think it is uh, it definitely a kind of a condition that we are going, you North Korea should you know, do this and this and that. So otherwise you'll face the same fate as in you know, Qaddafi of mm. Libya. So this is a kind of warning, but that doesn't mean Mr. Trump, Mr. Bolton was really trying to ruin the whole agreements between the two leaders. He was definitely a kind of part of the tactics on, on his side. But also there's a lot of things that North Korea should learn from the Libyan model because unless they really followed or complied with all of the terms in the agreements, mm. he might follow the same suit. So this is a warning, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the United States will really push North Korea into that corner so that Mr. Trump will really put Mr. Kim into a corner so that he might face a kind of collapse in stability. Mm. I think it's far from it, actually just the opposite, because he really means to see a very rich North Korea mm. and very well-to-do, opened up society, just unlike his you know, father and grandfather. So Mr. Tr uh, Bolton has played a very important role, even though he's sometimes super hawkish or something. Mm -hmm. But as if he's a really uh, nice gentleman, as a matter of fact, even though he sounded very tough uh, sometimes. But when it comes to specific points, he really means you know, business. Mm. So we have to take him seriously, why he spoke, that certain, made a certain remarks on that particular time. But as it turned out, it was taken as a serious kind of provocation to the North Korean leadership. And Mr. Uh, Trump also determined to cancel the planned right. meeting. So it, all, it just turned out, looking back, that was an interpretation. We had all the media people and the pundits here in, in, in Pyongyang and Washington. But I think uh, Mr., uh, Mr. Bolton has played its role because he's in charge of all national security right. of the United States. And he's been very privy and he's been uh, extended uh, knowledge about, or the CTR, for example, like mm. with the North Korea, like corporate threat reduction. And he's the one who was talking about the North Korean leadership 
uh, like 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So he's really in charge of that matter when it comes to CVIG mm. or CVID. So that's why Mr. You know, Bolton is here, even though many people just uh, didn't like the idea that why he's present at this very important mm. meeting, uh, other, uh, other than that he wants to ruin this committee meeting. But I think that's the reason why he was joined the the lunch mm. rather than the first part of this whole process, uh, the one-on-one -on -one meeting and also extensive meeting. That's intentionally designed to give the impression why we mean business and right. we want to just you know irritate you or mm. distract you from our main agenda. Right. Let's yes. talk about that main agenda, which is the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, mm -hmm. dismantling North Korea's nuclear program. Uh, so what's the sticking point there between the two sides? Sticking point is because it will take a long time to implement all the CVI ideas. Some people like uh, people said like, it may take as long as like 15 years. 15 years. years oh. as the according to the Convention of Freedom mm -hmm. because they have so many unlisted, undeclared places somewhere underground. Right. But North Korea really decides, the leader really decides to open the society and give the whole list of its facilities underground or on the side. Then it will just quicken mm. the process of implementing all these CVID inspections intrusive inspection sometimes. Mm. So depending on because and also to give the technology that have been developed over the last uh, century. Uh, so depending on the leaders uh, determination they really want to see a very well implemented process along the way then might quicken the process of, of this kind of otherwise it's going to be a long process like two or three years or even ten years. Right, it's uh, definitely going to be a complicated uh, process. So, but sometimes the, 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 the lessons we learn might be a guide for our uh, kind of future pursuit, but also it, it, it might turn out to be a kind of uh, gonna hurdle on our way to pursue new, uh, new goals because mm. Korean case is quite different from the Ukraine or Kazakhstan style or Libya model. Right. This is a, should it be a Korea specific kind mm. of a model so that was what I called Mr. Trumpian, you know, model of right. dismantling <laughs> of North Korean, you know, nuclear weapons and programs and whatnot. Okay. And obviously, like U.S. Secretary of State Pompeo said many times, he reiterated that the only requirement that the um, U.S. will ask the North Korea is that CVID. Mm. But obviously, uh, North Korea is sort of not sure about whether the U.S. will provide CVIG, the security guarantee for their regime. Mm. So now mm. um, we have to see whether two sides agreement will bear that expression, CVID, because there are a lot of IR experts out there saying that North Korea will never take CVID and they will, you know, as they have done many times before, they will just try to um, take step-by-step -step approach, mm. but at the same time, they will not completely and verifiably and irreversibly dismantle. So we have to come and see, but let's hope for the best that they I agree, agree on that. Right. Nobody has been so sure about uh, what kind of exact steps mm -hmm. North Korea will take along their way of the CBIZ. But conventional wisdom told you to take many, uh, many years to implement all this process, but also North Korea has a tremendous a kind of lack of security, sense of security, yes. because they're facing such a superpower like the United Strong States, sanctions. with tremendous Dude. military options available to them, mm. and also South Korea's growing capability as well. So it is, it is quite natural, quite reasonable for North Korean leadership that we want a very strict CVIG mm. in return for a CVIG. So it is quite a natural a kind of requirements by the North Korean leadership, and this request has been pretty much well taken by the uh, the U.S. leadership, including. Uh, Mr. Trump and Pompeo, uh, that's why they, make, they can really come to an agreement mm -hmm. to change the CVIG with the CVIG. Whatever terms they might you know, use, ends up using all these. Uh, but they, are, they mean the same thing. It's a very difficult and a challenge for both the leaders mm -hmm. to really comply these requirements for CVIG and CVID. It's also a very time-consuming process. Mm. So we are talking about just you know, a couple of months and at the right. time, by the end of this year, impossible. Right. But this is, as told, a gradual, we call this synchronized way. We mm -hmm. call this, this is actually China's recommendation because China is a very realistic, because uh, implementing the CVID, uh, CVID router, is, it will be a very uh, difficult. It cannot be done overnight or within one or two years. It will take a very long time. But as we develop maybe kind of confidence in each other, 
and all kind of political CBM, CVG and CVMs rather, mm -hmm. and also political CBMs, then they might have some confidence in their own capability to get their, you know, to keep their regime safe. Uh, I think this is a guarantee that has been provided Mr. Trump for Mr. Kim. So I'm going to guarantee, I'm going to assure the regime's uh, security and stability, mm -hmm. and also I'm going to ready to make your country a rich country again. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a kind of something that has been really impressed each other, CVIZ and CVID. And that was, I think if it, they, these two particular terms are on the joint statement, that would be a big success. Right. Okay. Now, aside from denuclearization, there have been eyes on whether Mr. Trump would bring up the issue of human rights accord by North Korea during the summit with Kim Jong-un. What are your thoughts on I that? I don't know how, uh, if, if there was something about the kind of human rights violation in North Korea at the first one to one on a meeting this morning. Mm -hmm. But we will see pretty soon. Mm. But there are a lot of people in South Korea, in Washington particularly, who are very talking about the human, the, the human rights violations in mm. North Korea. And they have been building, they have been you know, making all kind of hearings and you know, conferences about how to stop North Korea's bad behavior of you know, treating their friends so badly, uh, even though we understand why, what was the situation back then. But now North Korea has become much more strong country, a little mm -hmm. relative speaking, mm -hmm. and more confident. And Mr. Kim is more confident in his uh, leadership and his popularity among the North Korean residents. So probably this the remark of North Korean human rights violations is something that really deserved to be made by the North by U.S. leadership and also by some other countries as well, by mm -hmm. uh, our own present. But that will not really antagonize or irritate North Korea as they did in the past, okay. because North Korea feels much more comfortable, mm -hmm. and given the, all the secure assurance from the mm -hmm. Trump, Mr. Trump, so now what's wrong with that? So maybe relative speaking, everything will change in North Korea when it comes to North Korean human rights. Right. I mean, maybe I'm, I'm, I sound maybe too optimistic. No, no, but, but yeah. we have seen recently North Korea freeing uh, mm -hmm. American detainees. Right. And we also hear about uh, family reunions being prepared between the two Koreas. So mm -hmm. we're definitely seeing a progress on that side, but we're hoping to see more. I guess that's what others are saying. And also, like, UN special rapporteurs who, who are watching over North Korea's human rights issues are saying they completely support the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they will keep closely watching whether the North Korea's human rights issues will be solved because that will be sort of integral part of mm. what it means for North Korea's just civilians. Mm. So let's hope if that human rights issue are solved, it will be a great achievement for not only for the Korean Peninsula, but for the entire world. Just like any kind of human, mm. North Korean human rights violation cannot be solved anytime soon. It right. take a long time. Maybe it is a gradual yeah. or synchronized way. Uh, just like a CVID, CVID, but North Korean human rights violation is something that really deserved much more wider contention, even by this Korean government in Seoul, mm. uh, because this will be ends up as we're prompting North Korea into the right direction. Mm -hmm. So the human rights violation is something that should have given a full attention, number one priority to your people. Right. This is, and we are talking about your own people, not. South mm. Koreans or Chinese, we are right. talking about your own people. Mm, so Mr. People. Kim, if he gets much, uh, comes out of this meeting, which much more confident about the prospects of getting all kind of supports and easing of sanctions by the international community, including the United States, he might be much more open-minded and he may hopefully make much more bold decision to something deal to, mm. to do with North Korean human rights violation, even though they don't, uh, you know, accept the terminology mm -hmm. as a matter right. of fact. But do, they do definitely do something good because out of his own sense of price and confidence in his own capability to rule and reign his own country mm. rather than just the outside pressures, okay. Right, now we've been hearing reports about how if today's summit goes well, there's a possibility of a second summit between Mr. Kim and Mr. Trump at next month in Pyongyang, and also possibly of them meeting together in Washington, D.C., also sure. in September. So what are the chances of It's quite of likely because that? in the joint statement, there was one phrase that Mr. Uh, Kim Jong-un or uh, Mr. Mr. Trump has invite an extended invite to other leader to visit Pyongyang or Mar-a-Lago. I think that this is something that can really happen. But I don't know about the time, about the location, but something definitely done because we have to have a series of you know, meetings to 
to end the final stage of uh, declaring the war on the Korean Peninsula and finding, signing a kind of peace treaty between the two countries. Because this is a very complicated process. Declaring an end to the war is one thing, but signing a peace treaty is just another. But we saw also other some very important political military questions involved, like the future of the UNC, for mm. example. Combined forces, come CFC. And what about the USFK presence and right. the, their role, you know, functions, roles and functions, missions under different uh, circumstances. So there's a lot of questions to be discussed uh, by the two leaders and also South Korea and, United, and China also should play, get involved in this very long, difficult process. Now, talking yeah. about USFK, we know that we have that inter-Korea military talks mm -hmm. coming up this week That's right. on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So what can we expect from that? Well, the South Korea's defense ministry actually sent a list of delegation of its general level inter-Korean military talks yesterday. And today, about 11 a.m., uh, Yonhap News Agency based in Seoul reported that North Korea also sent its list of general level okay. inter-Korean military mm. talks officials. Mm. And uh, although the, the main agenda of the talks will greatly dependent upon the result of today's talks. But um, according to military officials that I've talked to at the Defense Ministry, said the main agenda will be um, centering on the issue of easing tensions on the inter-Korean border mm. and the implementation of April 27th Panmunjom Declaration, where two Koreas agreed to stop all hostile acts between two Koreas. And they will also talk about restoring communication lines between two Koreas. There are some lines still available, but there are other communication lines mm. that was cut because of some forest fire, but they couldn't be able to reconnect because of the political landscape here in Korea. So they will basically talk about um, how to improve mm. their relationship militarily. Mm. I'd like to bring attention to the, the order of the meetings with, between North and South Korea. Mm. We have begin with the general level military mm -hmm. talks because that will be the most fundamental part of all our relationship. Once we achieve the, some kind of you know, military confidence in each other, then we are going to move to other uh, areas as well whether it be cultural sports events and also the reunion of the separate families you know, between North and South Korea. So I think I'd like to bring your attention to the why we both in North and South Korea begin with the general level talks, even though we had that kind of meetings many times before. And General Kim, by the way, it will be the heading of the South Korea delegation today. He's been very privy to this kind of operations. Uh, General Moon, as a matter of fact, mm. is a, a typical commentator. He has been invo personally involved in this kind of uh, level talks with North Korea many times in the, in the past. So General Moon, the new head of the new delegation to North Korea, was the chief of the North Korea policy division at the Ministry of National Defense. And he got all the supports from his, uh, from his uh, people, his personnel, and also many, you know, uh, some, some policy consultation mm. or recommendation by the institution like my institution, KIDA. Okay. So, <laughs> so we actually worked on those issues for 20 years ago. Mm, yeah. We are talking about the reconciliation and non-aggression, 1991. So almost this is a flashback to 20 years ago. Like again, the resumption of the talks, military, beginning with the military and moving to the economy and culture and one of sports is a very important. So I think they say we are on the right track to a much better relation between two Koreas. And also, this will, should be supported by our neighbors, including the United States and China. So. All right. So before we go on with more discussions on today's summit, let's first uh, get a look at some of the reports that we made in regards to today's summit.